A powerful storm system is set to impact the United States over the next few days, bringing the return of significant severe weather to areas like the Great Plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even back through the Southeast, where damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes will all be a possibility. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we actually have a lot of stuff ongoing. Back over in the Midwest, we have a large upper level low pressure system that is spinning over the Great Lakes and as we go later into today this storm system is actually going to intensify and bring a localized threat of potentially some significant severe weather to areas near and just east of the Appalachian Mountains with all hazards of severe weather being on the table and we'll talk more about this here in just a few minutes additionally we've had some big storms on going back over in Texas over the last 24 hours and these storms are definitely unique we had a bunch of dust kicked up across all of West Texas from these storms that happened and they are beginning to weaken now and I do think the southern plains will at least be quieter for today and tomorrow and then I think severe weather makes a big return as we go into early to mid next week also we now have a tropical storm guess what back over in the eastern Pacific Ocean we actually have tropical storm Alvin which is currently heading up into the Baja California and eventually going to Mexico and as we go into Saturday into Sunday this can actually bring some moisture and energy back up into the southern plains which may actually help to amplify a threat of severe weather as we go into Monday in areas like Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Over the next few days, a major weather pattern change will be impacting the United States. So let's talk more about that in detail, beginning with what's happening today and tomorrow. So right now we have a large low pressure system that is currently sitting back over in the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. And as we go later into this afternoon, notice how our jet stream is actually going to be very strong near the Appalachian Mountains and the Mid-Atlantic. And if we have any supercells out there that are discrete, we will have a very favorable environment for this time of the year for the potential for all hazards of severe weather, including damaging winds, hail, and even a few tornadoes. And we're going to talk more about this in detail here in just a few minutes. But this is definitely a very favorable setup, kind of almost coming out of nowhere here as we go later into this afternoon. Now, as we go into Saturday and into Sunday, this storm system is going to be huge back over in the Northeast. We're really mostly just talking about rain, though, Saturday and Sunday for those in New England. Also, much colder weather is going to be coming out of Canada, moving into the Midwest and also into the Ohio Valley in the Southeast. Notice this thing right here though on Sunday. This is going to be our first of many storm systems as we go into this next work week, which are going to bring the risk of significant severe weather. So as we go into late Sunday and Monday, this storm system is going to make its way up into the four corner states and it will not be a very intense upper level low. More than anything, this is going to be a surface based low pressure system. But on Monday, we are expecting the risk of severe weather to exist in a couple of different areas, one of which will be back up in the northern plains, where I think large hail and damaging winds will be the main concern. And then also over in the central and southern plains, this is an area where it's a little bit more conditional, but all hazards of severe weather could be on the table, including the risk of tornadoes. So we need to watch this very closely on Monday, but we're not done with severe weather there. On Tuesday, that storm system will move a little bit further off to the east. It's going to be a little short wave trough. I think we'll have another threat of significant severe weather on Tuesday, basically anywhere from the central and southern plains, especially near Kansas City, back through Oklahoma City, and then also back up into parts of the Midwest and also the Ohio Valley, where damage winds and hail will be the main concerns, but a more elevated tornado risk will likely exist mainly back over in Missouri, the Ozarks, and also back into eastern Oklahoma and north Texas. Now on Wednesday, that storm system starts to move out. We may have a little bit more severe weather left over on Wednesday back over in the Ohio Valley and the northeast, but this right here will be the next storm system to watch for. As we go into Wednesday, another low pressure system will move over the Rockies, and we should see at least some more severe weather Wednesday and Thursday. It will all begin back over in the central and southern plains on Wednesday and then on Thursday if the storm system is able to stay organized enough we may see a little bit more additional severe weather make its way up into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley now generally speaking these are not super intense storm systems it's just that we're going to have so many storms on top of each other here that we are likely going to see a very active weather pattern with multiple shots of severe weather so it's a good idea to stay weather aware as we go into next week and expanding more on this threat of severe weather next week I do want to point out that we will have a ton of moisture to work with as we go into early to mid next week across nearly the entire Great Plains, the Midwest and the Ohio Valley with dew points in the low to mid 60s. And all you really need for severe weather is a dew point of around 55 or so to actually get a more legitimate chance of tornadoes, hail and wind. So this is basically all we need for there to be severe weather as we go into the early to mid portion of next week. On Tuesday, the amount of moisture is going to surge, especially in the Midwest and back into the central and southern plains with our dry line and as well as our warm frontal boundary in a very favorable area Tuesday 
Wednesday afternoon in Missouri, Iowa, Kansas, all the way back into Texas and Oklahoma with dew points in the mid 70s. It is going to be impressive out there. And in addition to all the instability and as well as wind shear we're going to have, this should be a very favorable environment on Tuesday for maybe even a severe weather outbreak. On Wednesday, that amount of moisture stays very high all the way up into the northeast and also into the southern plains. We could have a pretty long stretch here of severe weather on Wednesday across a large chunk of the country. And then on Thursday, our moisture should return right back to the central and southern plains. Another storm system will move over the four corner states, which should set up another potential for some significant severe weather. Right now, I think Tuesday and Thursday look to be the most concerning days for severe weather, but Monday and Wednesday could also be a little bit sneaky and provide the potential even for more significant severe weather. And another tool that we can use to indicate where our greatest threat of severe weather is going to be on a given day is our supercell composite. And on Monday, we have really two definitive corridors where we're expecting some severe weather to take place, one of which will be our northern plain setup where hail and wind is the main concern, and then more of a tornado risk could exist in our southern mode across Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, but it is going to be conditional on our wind shear, the trough ejection timing, and all that sort of stuff. So we don't exactly know what's going to happen yet on Monday in terms of our tornado threat, but it could be something to keep an eye on in those three states. And then on Tuesday, the threat of severe weather will shift further to the east, and I do think Tuesday has the potential to be a severe weather outbreak anywhere from the Midwest all the way back into the Southern Plains. But one thing that could hinder our threat of severe weather could be morning convection. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But as of right now, generally speaking, it is a favorable corridor for severe weather on Tuesday. Wednesday, right now, the GFS model is hinting at a slightly more elevated threat of severe weather in the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. Maybe something stretching back into the Southern Plains, but that is uncertain at this time. And then on Thursday, our threat of severe weather should return right back into the heart of the tornado alley back over in the central and southern plains. Now let's put this all into more simplistic terms with the future radar, beginning with what's happening today, which again, we're going to go more in detail on this here in just a moment, but showers and thunderstorms will be ongoing this afternoon and evening across the east coast with all hazards of severe weather being possible. Large high pressure system dominating across the Great Plains. This is going to keep things warm and dry for the rest of the weekend. As we go into early next week, that is when one of three different storms will be entering into the Rockies and then eventually going into the Great Plains. On Monday, we are expecting that low pressure system to be right over Colorado and a few supercells will fire back over in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas with the main concern being hail and wind, but an isolated tornado or two are a possibility. And then our northern mode of severe weather should kick off later in the afternoon, evening hours, and that'll be a lot of hail and wind. On Tuesday, the storm system moves further to the east with scattered showers and thunderstorms happening all across the Midwest back into the central plains. Really, this is going to come down to storm mode, I think, and also our morning convection. If we have discrete supercells and we don't really have a whole lot of morning convection, we definitely could have a big day on Tuesday. But at least for right now, the GFS model is hinting at a slightly more messy setup when it comes to severe weather. But again, that could easily change between now and Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, that storm system will weaken as it moves into the northeast in Canada. But there could be a few isolated to scattered severe storms, primarily in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, and maybe a few more storms across the southern plains back to the Mississippi River Valley. On Thursday, more storms are likely to kick off back over in the central and southern plains. All hazards of severe weather likely going to be on the table with that. And then by Friday and Saturday, things become a lot more uncertain. But I do think this active weather pattern will continue for quite some time. I also want to point out that in the tropics, there is a low chance of something developing in the Gulf or in the Caribbean Sea between now and about June 15th. But it's probably going to be something that's geared closer to June 7th until June 15th and somewhere in that time frame. Right now, the GFS model is indicating a hurricane in the Gulf by around June 11th. But keep in mind that this is well over 10 days from now, and there's almost no chance of this happening right now. But I want to point out that there is a potential that we get some sort of tropical system somewhere closer to the middle of June that develops back over in the Caribbean, and that could eventually impact the United States. I'm giving development chances between now and June 15th about a 20% chance. So just something to keep in mind. Again, nothing right now if forecast to impact the United States, but I just want to give you guys an early heads up in case something actually does develop. Now, we've talked a lot about the long-term forecast, but let's talk a little bit more about what's happening in the short term, like what's happening today in terms of our severe weather threat. So for Friday, we have a slight risk of severe weather in place from Maryland all the way back over into Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Southeast Alabama, and a marginal threat that goes from New Jersey back towards Houston, Texas, and Orlando, Florida, where the greatest concern for today will be damaging winds and large hail. In fact, I would not be surprised if the Storm Prediction Center pulls out a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather for damaging winds today for those in South Carolina and North Carolina. On top of that, there is a chance for a few tornadoes, and there's actually a 5% tornado risk in place in parts 
of North Carolina and also southeastern Virginia near Richmond, and a 2% tornado risk from about Washington, D.C. back into southeastern Georgia. There is a chance that we go live today, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live. Now let's talk more about the timing for today, beginning with what's happening this morning, which we have some scattered showers and thunderstorms already out there this morning. By around lunchtime or so, those storms will be approaching the Appalachian Mountains, where our line of storms will begin to form back over in Alabama and Georgia, with damaging winds being the primary concern. But by about 2 to 3 o'clock, these storms are going to organize rapidly anywhere from central Georgia back up into southern Virginia. This is the corridor right here where the greatest threat of both damaging winds and tornadoes should exist, which is mainly across northern North Carolina and southern Virginia. And then further down to the south, we'll likely have at least a couple of different clusters or lines of thunderstorms ongoing by the same exact time, with damaging winds as the primary concern, but an isolated tornado being possible. By about 5 to 6 o'clock, these storms will continue to push east. Again, multiple different clusters will be ongoing. I really don't anticipate there being many discrete supercells, if any, today, but if we were to get a discrete supercell ahead of this line, the tornado threat would be much more elevated, but I do not really see much of that happening today. By around 7 to 8 o'clock, these storms are approaching the coastline. Most of South Carolina will be done before sunset, and then back over in Virginia, North Carolina, and Maryland, uh, there will still be a few storms out there even around sunset, but I think most things clear out by around 9 to 10 o'clock tonight, and then just some rain left over as we go into Saturday morning for those back over in New England. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. As a friendly reminder, our videos this weekend on Saturday and Sunday will be in the afternoon instead of the morning. So if you wake up at 6 a.m. and you don't see a video, that is because I am not uploading in the morning this weekend, but we will return to morning videos most likely on Monday. So just a little heads up there. Also, our next video will go way more in detail about the severe weather upcoming. That will be again Saturday afternoon. And then lastly, there is a chance that we go live later today for severe weather coverage. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if we do go live.